Hi, this is Prakash from 60 seconds. So today we'll look at a problem on indices. So the question goes like this. So R equals 30 to the power 65 minus 29 to the power 65 divided by 30 to the power 64 plus 29 to the power 64. And we have to find out the range of value of R. So will R lie between 0 to 0 0.1 or 0.1 to 0.5 or 0.5 to 1 or R is greater than 1. Now first we have to understand is that the question is not asking us the exact value of R. It is asking us to find the range of R. Okay. So please don't try to find the exact value. I would request you to try to solve the question on your own. And once you have tried, then please proceed to look at the answer or the solution. Okay. Assuming that you have tried the question, let's look at the solution. This question can be solved multiple ways. First, we look at a conventional way and then we look at a lateral approach. And then we'll see if we can use the options in any way. So in the conventional way, we should know basic algebraic expansions. For example, I know a square minus b square equals a plus b into a minus b. Same way, I need to know what is a to the power n minus b to the power n. So I know a to the power n minus b to the power n will be equal to a minus b into a to the power n minus 1 plus a to the power n minus 2 into b plus a to the power n minus 3 b square plus so on. So this comes from binomial expansion. So if you see power of a will keep decreasing and power of b will keep increasing. First power of a is n minus 1 and it keep reducing n minus 2 n minus 3 and finally it becomes 0. Same way first power of b is 0 and it keeps increasing and finally it becomes b to the power n minus 1. So this comes from binomial expansion. We need not know the derivation. Please remember it as a result. It's a very standard result and every cat aspirant is expected to know this result. So we can use this expression to solve this question very easily. So if I look at my numerator, my numerator is in the form of a to the power n minus b to the power n where a is 30 and b is 29 very clearly a is 30 and b is 29. So if I expand the numerator, I will get a minus b which is 30 and 29. So 30 minus 29 and then I get a to the power n minus 1. So I will get 30 to the power 64 because n is 65. So I get 64 here n minus 1 and b to the power 0. Then I get 30 to the power 63 n minus 2 into b to the power 1 which is 29 to the power 1 and so on and finally I will get 30 to the power 1 into 29 to the power 63 plus 29 to the power 64 which is nothing but b to the power n minus 1. So this is my expansion of the numerator which is very clearly direct from this expression directly from this expression and the denominator remains same 30 to the power 64 plus 29 to the power 64. Now I will just rearrange the terms 30 minus 29 is nothing but 1 so 1 into something so it remains the same so this 30 minus 29 gets eliminated so I get 30 to the power 64 plus 30 to the power 63 into 29 and so on so I get the second bracket only now what I am going to do is I am going to focus on this term and I am going to focus on this term and why am I focusing on this term? Because the, these are part of my denominators. So I put them together. That's what I've done here. 30 to the power 64 plus 29 to the power 64. I have separated these two terms, put them together. Plus I have rest of the terms. 30 to the power 63 into 29 plus 30 to the power 62 plus 29 square and so on. Till this term. Till this term. Which is 30 into 29 to the power 63. So I have split the whole bracket into two parts. So I get this and this is my second part of the bracket and the denominator appears in each part. Now clearly 30 to the power 64 plus 29 to the power 64 divided by the same value will give me 1 and so this will give me 1 and this is some non-zero value. This is some positive value for sure. So I will get 1 plus something. I will get 1 plus something which is definitely greater than 1. So thus R is greater than 1 and my answer is 4th option. So I can mark the 4th option. 
So it's a simple question, but if I don't realize this, it can become difficult in exam. Okay. Now I will look at an alternate alternative approach. If say I don't know this that a to the power n minus b to the power n is equal to a minus b into a to the power n minus one and so on. If I don't know about this expression, or say I know of this expression but I am not able to think of this in exam. So can I look at a alternative approach? So an alternative approach would be I will take baby steps. I will take baby steps in the sense I will take small powers and see what happens with small powers. And in all likelihood, whatever happens with small powers will also happen with larger powers. So instead of power is sixty five and sixty four, I will take smaller numbers. So since sixty five is an odd number, I will take an odd number, a smaller odd number, to replicate the case. Okay, I will not take an even number. I will rather take an odd number, so that there is a similarity maintained in the original case and the refined or smaller case that I am taking. So if I take it as cube, so I will use a smaller power and see what we get. So for example, I can take thirty cube. So if I take thirty cube, I will get thirty cube minus twenty nine cube. I will get thirty cube minus twenty nine cube, and here it will become thirty square and twenty nine square. Now these are smaller numbers which we can calculate manually also. So if I take thirty cube, thirty cube is easy to calculate. It is nothing but twenty seven thousand. Three cube is twenty seven, and I will get three zeros. So I will get twenty seven thousand. Okay. I will come to twenty nine cube in a second. Okay. 30 square is easy to calculate. It is 900. 29 square. Ideally, you should remember square is still 30. Or if you want, you can calculate this value. It is nothing but 841. It's not very difficult to calculate. So 29 square is 841. Now, numerator I have 29 cube. 29 square will give me 841. I know. And then again, I am supposed to multiply it by 29. Now, you might think that. It might become a little difficult to multiply by twenty nine, or it might be a little time consuming. So let me approximate it to thirty. Let me not take twenty nine. Let me approximate it to thirty. Doesn't matter. So then eight forty one into thirty is easy to calculate. Eight hundred into three, or eight into three will give me twenty four. So I'll get twenty four thousand forty one into three is nothing but one twenty three and a zero. So I'll get one two three zero. So I'll get. Twenty-four thousand plus one thousand two hundred thirty, which will give me nothing but twenty-four thousand two hundred thirty. Okay. I mean, you can just multiply and check. I should ideally take it twenty-nine, but I have taken it thirty. Now, please understand that I have inflated this value. I have inflated this value. So, actually, it should be eight forty-one into twenty-nine, but I am taking eight forty-one into thirty. So, I have increased the value. So the numerator that I will be getting is actually lesser. The whole value of the numerator will decrease. But even with the decreased numerator, the value of the numerator is seventeen seventy, and the value of the denominator is nothing but seventeen forty one nine hundred plus eight forty one, which will give me seven hundred forty seventeen hundred forty one, which is lesser than the numerator. So I still get a value. So I still get a value which is greater than one. I decreased my numerator by taking thirty instead of twenty-nine, and still I am getting a value which is greater than one. So if I would have taken here twenty-nine, I would have definitely got a value. If I have taken here twenty-nine, I would have definitely got a numerator which is higher than seventeen seventy, and my expression would have been definitely greater than one. So even if I take a smaller value, clearly I get a value which is greater than one. So I can mark my answer as option number four. Why I can be confident is because as the power increases, this 30 cube will increase much faster. 29 cube will also increase, but this 30 cube, every difference of even one will increase this 30 cube much much faster. So the numerator will increase very fast. The denominator will also increase, but the numerator increases much faster as the power is higher. A higher power creates a tremendous increase, and thus for any higher power. The value of the expression will be greater than one. I mean, if you want to look at it systematically, if I would have taken sixty-five as one, 
if I would have taken 65 as 1, I would have got 30 to the power 1 minus 29 to the power 1 divided by 30 to the power 0 minus 29 to the power 0, sorry, plus 29 to the power 0, which would have given me 1 divided by 30 to the power 0 is 1, 29 to the power 0 is 1, so I would have got 2. So I would have got the value as half. Right? Now, if I would have taken the power as 2, instead of 65, if I take the power as 2, I would have got 30 square plus 29 square divided by 30 plus 29, which would have given me 30 square is 900, 29 square is 841 divided by 30 plus 29 is 59. Sorry, this numerator is this numerator is minus, right? So I would have got 59 by 59, which would have been nothing but 1. So from 0 0.5, the value increased to 1. And from 1, the value has increased. As I'm increasing the power by 1, the value is increasing. From half, it became 1. And from 1, it became greater than 1. So obviously, as the power increases, I'm noticing that the value of r is constantly increasing and when the power is 65 obviously the value has to be greater than 1 so i can conclusively mark my answer as the fourth option which is r greater than 1.0 so now this can be another approach by which you can solve this question i can show you another way by which you can look at the question a different way of looking at the question by which you can eliminate some options but that may not be good enough to solve the question completely okay but you should be able but you can eliminate some of the options now let's see and then we'll see what conclusions can we draw can should we be using that approach to solve the question or is the approach not good enough to answer the question let's see now what i'll do is i will split the numerator i will split the numerator so let me break the numerator into two parts so one part is 30 to the power 65 another part is 29 to the power 65. So let me split it into two parts. So I get 30 to the power 65 divided by the denominator remains the same minus 29 to the power 65 divided by 30 to the power 64 plus 29 to the power 64. I know this whole expression is a positive value. If you look at the options, all the options are given to be positive. So this expression definitely the whole expression or the value of r has to be a positive number. Now I'll try to see what is the minimum possible value of this expression. I will take extreme cases and I will see what, are the, what is the minimum possible value of this expression. So I will try to see what is the minimum possible value of this whole expression. Of this whole expression. Okay. So for that what I will do is I will try to minimize this first expression. I will try to minimize this and I will try to maximize this. That will give me the minimum possible value of this whole expression. So to look at the minimum value of this expression I will minimize the first term and maximize the second term. So to minimize the first term, maximize the denominator. So what, what I to minimize this first term, what I'll do is I will maximize the denominator. So to maximize the denominator, what will I do? For simplification, I will take 29 to the power 64 as 30 to the power 64. I will replace 29 to the power 64 by 30 to the power 64. So my modified expression will look something like this. So the first term becomes 30 to the power 65 which is same as the numerator divided by 30 to the power 64 same as the first part of the denominator second part instead of 29 to the power 64 I have written it as 30 to the power 64 so this 30 to the power 64 plus 30 to the power 64 will add up to give me 2 into 30 to the power 64 so 30 to the power 65 divided by 30 to the power 64 will give me 30 divided by 2 which will give me 15 so the first terms minimum value minimum value can be 15 okay now let me look at the second term i am trying to maximize the second term so to maximize the second term i will try to minimize the denominator i will try to minimize this denominator so thus i will take 30 to the power 64 as 29 to the power 64 that's an extreme case i am taking i will take 30 to the power 64 as 29 to the power 64 and please understand why am I converting 
32 to the power 60 equal to 29 to the power 64 because my numerator is 29. So I can cancel some terms. That's how I look at the maximum value. So just like first term, I get 2 into 29 to the power 64, which gives me 29 by 2, which gives me 14.5. So the minimum value of first term can be 15, the maximum value of second term can be 14.5. So my modified expression becomes first term is 15, second term is 14.5 which is equal to 0 0.5. So the minimum value of this whole expression can be 0.5. Now definitely it will not be 0.5, it will be, the expression will be more than 0.5. So I can straight away eliminate my first and second option. So my answer lies in third option or fourth option. Now. This may not be good enough to select an answer. I still have two options and I don't know which one is right. But in the environment of exam, if I can eliminate two options and it is, it's only two options which I am confused with, I would be willing to take a chance. I mean, I can take a guess and there is a 50% chance of getting it right. So, will you attempt this question or not? Given that you have been able to eliminate two options, I will, leave, I will leave it up to you. But I just wanted to show you how using your common sense, you can eliminate some of the options. Okay. Maybe in this question, I was not, eliminate, I was not able to eliminate three options. But maybe in some other question, by using a similar logic, you might be able to eliminate say three options and you are left with only one option. Okay. I just want to open up your mind to a lateral thinking. So these are the different ways in which you can solve a question like this. Okay. If you have any questions, please post them below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Thank you.